try drawing NCL3 and so we're going to come up with the Lewis structure for this. If you look at the periodic table you'll see that nitrogen has five valence electrons. So let's see has and wants. Okay, so the nitrogen wants to have a complete octet of electrons. So does each chlorine. Since there are four total of these that each want eight electrons, they all want to be able to count 32 electrons surrounding them. Uh, and they have fewer than these electrons. They have fewer than 32. So for valence electrons, nitrogen has five. Each chlorine has seven. And again, you just look these things up by going to the periodic table and seeing what column the elements are in. So 5 plus 3 times 7, so that's 28. So the difference is the amount of electrons they have to share. You're right, it's 26. Not 28, 26. Awesome. So I, I make lots of mistakes left and right. So 26. Okay, so we're going to subtract these to see how many electrons participate in bonding. And 32 minus 26 is 6. So there are six bonding electrons in this molecule. And that means there are three bonds because each bond contains two electrons. Three bonds. And I also expect this to have a lot of non-bonding electrons. So of these 26 valence electrons, only six of them are participating in bonding, which means there are actually 20 non-bonding electrons. So let's go take a, take a look at this. To draw this, I would... Each of these chlorides has, or chlorines, has seven valence electrons, and that means that it can gain one more electron and complete its octet through a bond. So like hydrogen or the halogens, it's a good idea to think about these as being terminal in most compounds. So these chlorines are going to be at the end of the compound. They're not going to be in the middle. The nitrogen will be what ends up bridging these chlorines. Another hint is that in a lot of the more simple molecules, the kind of redundant elements are usually not the bonding, or sorry, not the center ones, but that's kind of not as good of a rule as just thinking about how these chlorines are going to be terminal. So let me put this nitrogen in the middle since it's going to be the one that's going to be kind of bridging these things. And then let's start sharing some electrons. Um, okay, so with this in mind, we can start uh, forming bonds from electrons. So I could form a bond from nitrogen to each of these chlorines. So like if I take this electron and this electron and form a bond. There we go. And I'd, I'd actually move this electron up to the other side so that these non-bonding electrons, if possible, I'm going to put them in pairs. That's, that's sort of the grammar of this. Like, if you have non-bonding electrons, try to pair them up so that it's kind of like they're filling up an orbital. I, I didn't invent the grammar, just follow it. <laughs> it's, not, it's not terrible grammar either, it's kind of sensible. Um, okay, so I'm going to erase those two electrons and form a bond from them. Boop. And I'm going to move this electron somewhere else. Actually, I'll use that to form a bond with this one. So, let's form a bond to that chlorine. All right, let me clean this up. So I'm going to get move these electrons so that the non-bonding electrons aren't like next to the bond. So there's no confusion about that. And I'm going to move these non-bonding electrons further away from the bond. I think that's kind of a really ugly Lewis structure. Um, I'm going to make this more square looking so that it's slightly less ugly to look at. So, so I think this would be an acceptable uh, Lewis structure here. So we have nitrogen in the center. We have chlorine surrounding them. 
Each chlorine has six non-bonding electrons and two bonding electrons signified by this bond. So that's eight valence electrons total. That's good. If you look at each, or, or at the only nitrogen here, um, it has three bonds, so that's six bonding electrons and two non-bonding electrons surrounding it. So that again fills the octet for nitrogen. So all the octets of everything are complete. Um, so that's a good sign. Let's count electrons to make sure that the total electrons we anticipated, the bonding number and the non-bonding number are all correct. So if I count the non, sorry, the bonding electrons, there's just one, two, three bonds, so that's six bonds total. So we were right about that. Six bonding electrons, I should say, with three bonds. So we were right. And if we look at non-bonding, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pairs of non-bonding electrons, or 20 non-bonding electrons. So we were right about that. And if you add them up, you get 26, which is the number of valence electrons we started with, so we didn't invent any electrons. So this is a great Lewis structure. So at this point, I think the next thing we should talk about is what geometry this is going to form. So here I'm just putting the formula into a structure calculator and we're going to see what it does. Okay, so this is a structure calculator that is free, uh, mole inspiration pretty neato. And what I did is I put in the Lewis structure, just the bonded atoms. I didn't put the um, non-bonding electrons in there or anything. But as you can see, this calculator is showing you a 3D geometry here. So um, that center blue point is the nitrogen, and the chlorines are these magenta outer ends of the molecule. Notice it's not flat. It's kind of pointy, right? It's not like a flat like a piece of paper. So what we're going to do in this class is actually be able to predict whether or not the molecule is flat, whether or not the molecule is pointy, what the bond angles are, like that chlorine, nitrogen chlorine bond, what they are, and uh, we'll be able to do so and then determine how um, that affects the polarity of the overall molecule. Here are the rules for determining the geometry of the structure and figuring out what the bond angles are. So I remember this as number of things surrounding the central atom. So in our Lewis structure, we had three things surrounding the central atom. We have this, sorry, we have four things. We have this lone pair of electrons, that counts as one thing. We have a bonded atom, another bonded atom, and a third bonded atom. So that's four things total. Uh, so for that, I would know that this is going to be a parent geometry of tetrahedral. So that's like bond angles that are about 109. And so it's going to have... this sort of structure. CL, CL, CL. So in this geometry, you're looking at something that looks kind of like a uh, tripod. And instead of the top of the tripod having a camera, it just has these lone pair of electrons. This geometry where it would be a tetrahedron, but it's missing a top, that's, you know, where there's electrons instead of a top, this is called trigonal pyramidal, trigonal meaning three substituents, three atoms connected to the central atom, and pyramidal meaning like not flat. The alternative to something that had to this that has, uh, the alternative geometry would be trigonal planar, and planar meaning flat. So that would be like if you had a central molecule, I'll, I'll make something up as trigonal planar. Uh, let's say we have like SO3. So this thing would be flat, flat, like there's, it would be like a piece of paper. So they'd all be in the same plane. Each of these angles would be 120. So that 
OSO angle for each of these would be 120. Here they're not 120, they're smaller, they're like 109, something like that. So as it turns out, this thing ends up being uh, not flat. And you can use a table to figure out what geometry they're going to be. I just remember like number of things. So like in this table, there's a distinction made between whether or not there are uh, three bonds or two bonds or four bonds. But the bottom line here is that the number of things. Uh, they say number of electron pairs uh, as being the number of things. I, I don't know that I would call it that. The, the way you can count is, is you can just say, look, number of atoms plus number of non-bonding pairs, like number of bonded atoms plus number of non-bonding pairs. Or another way you can do it is just count everything up, but don't count multiple bonds. So if there's a double bond, just count it as one bond. That's fine also. And that'll lead you to categorizing it in the right way. We'll do a lot of examples like this so that it becomes second nature.